Hey guys, so I pray you're blessed today. I am really excited to let you all know that May 25th at 3 o'clock Central Standard Time, we will be doing a live. And it's going to be done over the book of Revelation, mainly focusing on the seven year tribulation. Because there's so much in the book of Revelation that we can't go over it all in one live. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get your questions now. That way we can give you in-depth, detailed answers to your questions. We might not be able to get to everyone's question, but we want to do as many as we can. And so we want to go ahead and start compiling these questions. So if you don't mind, post them in the comment section of this video. Or you can email your questions to me on my through my email, which is in the description box. If you email me your questions, please make sure that you put on there question for live video. And it wouldn't hurt to even do it in the comment section, so I know it's a question that you have. Just put for for live. For live and then I'll know it's a question that you're wanting answered for the live and if you see someone's already asked the question that you're wanting to be asked just put just hit the thumbs up button to let me know that you really are interested in this question and I'll make sure that we we make note this is a question we need to really focus on because there's a lot of people who are interested in this question because like I said, we might not get to everyone's question depending on how many questions we have that people send in. The more the merrier though. If something happens and we don't get to answer your question, maybe we can do another one on later if we're still here. And if we're not, hey, praise the Lord. But the thing you have to remember about the book of Revelation is that the church is not mentioned after chapter 4, the church is not mentioned. Actually, I think it's after the end of chapter 3, the church is not mentioned again. So, we're not going to be here. We are not going to be here for the seven-year tribulation. And I know, again, last night somebody got on here and was talking about the rapture being a false hope. I am truly sorry they must have posted that when I was asleep and I did not see it until I got up this morning and a couple of um, brothers and sisters had actually engaged him in conversation which there's nothing wrong with that but sadly when it comes to people like this all they want to do is argue which they really honestly did not argue back I don't know if they just decided it wasn't worth it or they just wanted to give their peace of mind and then they were done. I really don't know. But I went ahead and blocked them. And I, I don't normally like doing that. But there's been so this this channel and so many other channels that are focusing on the rapture and our blessed hope that stems from the rapture. They have been under severe attack and so I've just come up with the thought that you know what no more engaging them if they're not even watching the videos more than likely they just see the titles they see it has the word rapture in it and they go after it they don't even watch the videos they don't even listen to the evidence that we have that there is a rapture and it's a pre-tribulation rapture and it's not something we're fighting over because it's not a salvational issue that's what I don't understand it's not a salvational issue why argue over it? You know, since the Lord's really been growing me and maturing me in my faith, I, I sometimes find myself wanting to engage people, but I don't engage people because it doesn't do any good. Nine times out of ten, they just want to argue. And so... The Holy Spirit has been helping me just to ignore them. And it, it's sad that we have to do that, but we got to keep our peace of mind. And we've got to remember that not everyone is going to agree with us. 
And it would be nice to agree to disagree, but sadly, a lot of people just want to have an argument. And with people like that, you're, you can't win. You can't win with someone who wants to argue. Kind of reminds me of my ex-husband. He was a narcissist, and that's why all he wanted to do was argue. He had to be right. And with people who are narcissists, you're not going to win against them. Sometimes you just have to kind of ignore what they're saying. But anyways, um, I'll edit that part out. All we can do is pray for them and just leave them in God's hands. You know, there, there's people who believe that people like that will be left after the rapture. And then there's people who believe that as long as they believe in Jesus, they're going to heaven. I believe most people, even if they don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, but they truly have placed their faith and trust in Jesus, they're going to be raptured. But those who despise their brothers or sisters that cause strife, that cause arguments, that wish ill will on others, I don't believe they're truly found in Christ. You can't hate someone and still be of Jesus because Jesus loved. He said, you know, he even tells us that if we don't love our our brother that the love of Christ is not in us so yeah and all we can do is pray for people like that but don't let them steal your joy the enemy uses people like that to bring discouragement and a sense of defeat and we don't need that and we definitely don't want that Time is too short to be fighting and arguing with people who don't want to see reason. And as my dad always says, Mary behead him to you. Because sadly, it's going to be people like that who are going to be left behind. And they're more than likely going to be tribulation saints. I say more than likely because sadly there will be some that won't be able to stand. And they'll give in to the fear and they'll reject Jesus and they'll get they'll take the mark that's a scary thought i can't even imagine rejecting jesus <sighs> keep your eyes on him though because things are going to continue to escalate and you know Everything looks normal from the outside. If you're not listening to the actual news of what's actually going on in the world, everything would sound like it's hunky-dory. But those of us who are awake and know the truth, we know that things are far from normal. The, the northern right lights, the aurora borealis that we just had across the globe they are beautiful but what I don't think people understand is that that's a lot of radiation pouring in from our magnet sphere and it's collapsing we are actually on the verge of a pole shift which I believe is is the sixth seal. I really do. I believe it's the sixth seal where it talks about the lands will, they'll be all jumbled up. I think it's in Revelation 6. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And that's exactly what happens during a pole shift. That's exactly what happens during a pole shift. 
every island and every mountain is moved out of its place. And we are actually overdue for this pole shift. But something is restraining it. And we know exactly what is, restra what is restraining it. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus. And it's not just this pole shift. There's so much going on. The weather, the animals, the lawlessness that, that is abounding. I'm sorry, there's some kind of flying insects down here. I think they're ants. And we've sprayed and they're... they're slowly going away but they're still flying around and it's really irritating everything is escalating you know the hatred for Israel is off the charts many are even hiding their identity that they are a Jew in fear that if they are found out to be a Jew that they're gonna be either harmed or killed and that's horrific even here in America there has been Jewish people that have been murdered. Hatred is abounding. God said in the last days he would make Israel a burdensome stone. And we see that happening right now. That Israel will become a burdensome stone. America is doing its best to stay Israel's hand. To the point where they're sending in U.S. troops into Gaza to try to stop Israel. And using basically using our soldiers as meat bags. <laughs> People need to wake up and realize normal's not coming back, but Jesus is. And I believe it's soon. A lot of us believe it's soon. It's time to wake up. You know, this is why I believe this live is so important. Not so much for us who are found in Christ. Because if you're found in Christ, you're not going to be here. But you can share and pass along this information that you learn. Share it with your family. You know, save it on a USB drive if you know how to. But get the word out. Time is so short. This morning on the way... Or this evening on the way home. I had such a burden for the lost. And all I could do was cry. Because destruction is coming upon this world. And they are completely oblivious to it. And you try to warn people. And people are just like nonchalant about it. Well I'm just going to keep on living my life. I'm just going to keep on doing what I'm doing. And. You know, when I get home, I'll, I'll go home. But it's like, no, you don't realize. If you really realized what time we're in, we are in, you would be warning people. And you would be telling people, hey, it's time to get on the ark. And that ark is Jesus Christ. Because what is coming is going to be death and destruction on a large scale. It's time to wake up. All of the signs point that the tribulation is getting ready to start. And if that means the tribulation is getting ready to start, that means that we are that much closer to the rapture happening. Warn them, you know, and guys, don't feel like you're failing God. All you can do is warn people. If they don't listen to you, if they don't read your messages, if they don't watch your videos, if they don't listen to the words that are coming out of your mouth, you cannot force anybody to heed the warnings. Like I said last night, just as God told Ezekiel in Ezekiel 33, that if you warn the people of the enemy that is coming and they heed not the warning, then their blood is on their own hand, heads. But if you do not warn that the enemy is coming and you do not blow the trumpet to give the warning, then their blood will be on your hands. If you're warning people, you're doing exactly what you have to, what you're called to do. Planting seeds is all we can do. We cannot force anybody to accept Jesus. We cannot 
force anybody to call on him and to believe what he did on the cross. You can't make anybody do anything that they don't want to do. You can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink. So don't beat yourself up when you're doing all that you can do and people are not heeding the warnings. Believe me, a lot of times on Facebook, which mostly on Facebook, it's my family and my friends. I don't get a whole lot of likes and shares on my Facebook post and that's perfectly okay. The point is, is that people are seeing my post. Now, if they're heeding the warnings, I don't know. I think a lot of people are probably tired of seeing my warnings, but I just really don't care because I'm not here to please people. My heart is so burdened for the loss. And as Christians, we all should have a burden for them. Not just our loved ones, but all, all, everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever means anyone. Not just our four and no more. We can't just be concerned with our children, our spouses, our parents, our grandparents, our siblings, and not focus on anybody else. We have got to at least try to reach this world. And if they don't heed the warnings, then that's on them. You know, and that's exactly why I, I do the YouTube videos. That's exactly why I opened up my, my private Facebook page and made it public. Even though that can be a little hard sometimes because, you know, you get a lot of flack even from people who were supposed to be friends and family. But it just comes with the territory. And not everyone is going to agree with you. And one thing I have learned in the year and a half since I've been doing this, and it's hard to believe I've been doing this a year and a half, but since about the time Anthony died is when I started making these videos. Maybe a few days after, but, you know, about a week or two. It's, I've been doing them for about a, a a year and six months is that I've had to allow the Holy Spirit to toughen me up because I used to be very very tender-hearted when people would say ugly things to me and it would make me so upset and it would discourage me and I wouldn't want to make videos again until it finally got to the point where I said okay Lord this is what you want me to do toughen me up and he did he toughened me up now I just kind of get sad and kind of shake my head when it happens and I just delete. I don't let it phase me anymore because for one thing, I'm not the only one going through it. Another thing is I can't take it personally. And so many times we do, we take things personally and we can't. If someone refuses to listen to you, dust the dirt off your feet. And go on to the next person. Time is too short. You plant that seed and you go on to the next. And if they reject it, you plant the next seed. And the next. And the next. And the next. You keep going. And I know that's hard. But time is too short. And if people refuse, that's between them and God. If you do not know Jesus as your Savior, as your Lord, if you have not trusted and believed in what he did on the cross, you better be doing it now. Because if not, you are going to be left behind. And you don't want that. Time is too short. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 tells us if we believe just as the scriptures say that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, that he was buried and he rose again on the third day, 
That's the gospel. That is how you receive salvation, is by placing your faith and trust in what Jesus did on the cross. He died for every single one of your sins, past, present, and future. It's nothing that you can do. It's all about what he did. It's not about you. And that's hard for some people to understand that it's not about them. And it took me years of understanding for me to finally understand and get that through my thick skull that it wasn't based on what I could do, my performance, how well I performed. And it wasn't like I was doing it because I thought I could save myself. That's really what I thought I had to do. I really thought it was based on how I performed. And if I didn't perform well enough, then I could lose my salvation. And it's because I had a misunderstanding of the gospel. Do not place your faith and your trust. Sorry guys, those ants, they're horrible. Do not place your faith and trust in yourself. Place them in Jesus. Believe in what he did. You know, the Bible tells us if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and that God, and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead. Let's read that. It's Romans. Romans. Come to Christ. He's waiting on you. And he loves you so much. Jesus loves you. If he didn't love you, then he would have died for you. And he died for all. Not just certain groups of people. He died for all. Just as it said, he died. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. We did not replace the Jews. But we were grafted into the body. We are adopted. Alright, I love you all. If you have... Any prayer request, please make sure you put those in the comment section. You can email me, them to me too. Also, don't forget to post your questions in the comment section or email me. But just make sure you let me know this is a question. I want this, I want, this is a question that I want to be answered. Like I said, I can't promise that we'll get to everyone's question. But if there's a question that's similar to yours... Or it's the one that you were wanting to ask. Put a thumbs up so I know what this question is is important to you all. And the more thumbs up it has, the more I real the more I'll realize. Okay, this needs to be one of the top questions that we ask, or that we answer. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. It's been a long week. We've been testing all week for our new students. But all right, y'all. I'm gonna get off here. I I really am excited about this this live because it's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I do believe. And I pray it's informative. But have no fear. Because we're not going to go through the tribulation. If you are found in Christ, we will not go through the tribulation. No matter what anybody tells you. I'm sorry, I did not catch that person that posted the comment that the rapture is a false hope. And it was, I don't know how long it was on there. But it was on long enough for people to start commenting back. And I just didn't give the person any time to comment again. I just blocked them. The enemy is trying everything to discourage us right now. And we don't need that right now. We need to keep our eyes focused on Jesus because right now Satan is roaming to and fro, seeking whom he can devour. And if he can discourage you, if he can make you doubt or have fear or worry... He'll make you have fear or worry that you're not saved, that you've done something wrong and God hates you and he, can't, he won't forgive you for what you've done. He'll make you doubt that there is even a God if you allow him to. He will make you doubt that there's a rapture. He'll make you doubt that, you know, we're not going to go through the, the seven-year tribulation. He'll make you think, okay, well, maybe, maybe the rapture is not real. Maybe, maybe we're all being deceived and we just don't have an understanding. No, it's plainly written in scripture that we are not appointed to wrath. 
And I don't care what anybody says. The seven year tribulation is God's wrath being poured out on a reject because they have rejected Christ. They have rejected Jesus. We are not appointed to wrath. All right, but I love you all. I will talk to you all soon. And remember, post your questions. Please post your questions. Because if we don't have any questions, I don't know if we'll get to do the live or not. All right. Love you all. Talk to you later. Bye.